Good evening. This is Victoria from Women's Issues, Women's Voices, and I am very, very excited um, to be doing this interview. Um, this is an interview with some of the women of Kindred Collective, and I am just going to start out by saying I am, um, what's that, self-reveal or whatever you're always supposed to say, that I have a vested interest in this interview. I am a part of this collective. I love this collective. I love these women. And so this will not be an objective journalistic sort of interview. <laughs> so who I have here with me, and this is being pre-recorded by Zoom. So if you do notice any little baubles, um, just kind of go with it because this is being done in the world of the internet. Um, so I have three of my, my sisters of Kindred. Um, I call them kinfolk because that's how I feel. Um, so I have Kate Weir, who is the co-director of Kindred, and Molly Myers, who is a, a many, many things. I, so um, Molly is our movement coordinator, the coordinator of our movement space. She also is our family enrichment specialist, and she does our community outreach, as well as a few other things that, um, that keep Kindred uh, our, our glue together. We also have Megan Keeler, who's one of our newest practitioners who has joined Kindred. Um, she is an ecotherapist, and I'm excited to hear more about that in the second half. So, Kate. Yes. Hi. Hi. Okay, so I remember the first time I opened up the website and I saw um healing wellness art and i got my goose bumps and i said yes <laughs> so can you take us back to like the beginning i mean and and just to reveal to the audience so kate and molly are sisters and mm -hmm. and so two of the directors and then rob weir is kate's husband the other director uh, they are the team. Um, so Kate and Molly, yeah, back to the beginning, the bones. So I think if we're going to really think about going back to the beginning, I think mm -hmm. it started in my and Molly's childhood. And um, I mean, we, Molly and I are three <laughs> years apart and not only are we sisters, but we're um, soulmates, like we're best friends. <laughs> and, um, and we've always done life together very closely. And even when we were kiddos, for every phase of my career, I tried to like, like pull Molly into it. So mm. I studied education um, as an undergrad. Uh oh. You're freezing a little bit, Kate. Molly, are you frozen too? No. Okay. Well, we we lost Kate for a bit. <laughs> so so you get to pick up. This is the wonder of doing interviews during COVID. She's so back. there it are you back? Ah, yes. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> what was what was the last thing you heard me say? That that you were studying education. Yeah. So my undergrad degree was um, elementary education at first. Mm -hmm. And I remember even then us having conversations around like, I'd say, okay, come on, Molly, you should be, you should study education too, because then we could be teachers in the same school. And um, we just really, we have always wanted to do something together. Um, but then if you fast forward to my professional career, I spent um, several years, almost a decade, working as an elementary school counselor. Um, so working with young children in the school setting, which um, I absolutely loved. And one of the mm -hmm. things that I loved the most about working in the school setting was the community. Um, so if you have ever had the opportunity to work in a school, um, then you know what I'm talking about. You, there's, there's school family is, is a real thing. Um, and one of the things that I loved as an elementary school counselor was if I was working with a kiddo and helping them with their social emotional needs, 
um, I could work very closely with the other specialists in the building to provide wraparound support for a kiddo. So many of the kiddos I work with, I was able to identify, oh, and you know, they could really benefit from doing a special project with the art teacher. This kid is super creative. Or this mm -hmm. kid needs lots of movement opportunities. Maybe I could hook up with the PE teacher and we could work in some extra movement for them. Um, so I was able to really um, experience just for my own self personally as a human, this beautiful opportunity to be a member of a vibrant community, all working towards the same cause. And then also this idea of, um, you know, a, you know, adults showing up and each of us having different specialties and we can pool our resources to help kids. Um, mm -hmm. I then fell in love with play therapy and um, just there was there was no going back, sort of fell in love with it, became registered as a play therapist, became licensed mm -hmm. as a professional counselor. And while I loved so much about being in the schools, I knew that what I wanted to do primarily was offer play therapy. And um, that meant moving to private practice. So when I shifted from the schools to private practice, I was in a, um, I spent a year at, um, in a private practice in Jeff City, which was a wonderful opportunity, and then moved my practice to Columbia because I was pregnant with my son and I wanted to work in the same community where um, I lived. So I spent a few years as a, pri a totally solo private practitioner, um, still working primarily with kiddos. And while I loved the flexibility that it provided, especially as a new mom, I missed community. I missed, mm -hmm. I missed the community of being in a practice and I missed the community of being in a school. I also work with lots of um, kiddos who have experienced trauma. And when I was working with kiddos who experienced trauma, I knew that in some of my cases, I needed a team. Like the kiddo deserved a team. Um, and I needed to be working hand in hand with professionals who had gifts and talents and knowledge that I did not possess. And so I created teams around kids. Um, I brought in an EFT practitioner. I brought in a psychiatrist who I really, really trust. Um, I brought in opportunities mm -hmm. for kiddos to use music and use art. Um, I consulted with friends who specialized in certain topics um, and I just created teams around kids. And it happened often enough um, that those of us who teamed up regularly started just daydreaming like, how cool would it be if we were mm -hmm. all in the same building and we could team up around kids? And so that was a big part of it was building teams around mm -hmm. kids. Um, yeah. Humans are just so multifaceted. And so they need multi, many points of intervention in, in different ways. And it's not always going to be just talk or play. So that was thing one was um, just this idea of like, wow, what if these comprehensive teams were all under one building? And then thing number two was this idea of community. Like we, um, in order for us as per, like wellness professionals to provide really great services, we need to be well and humans need community to be well. Um, and so that's, that's where Kindred came from is just, you know, kind of talking about, wow, what if we could build a community where we could support each other and we could consult on cases and provide peer supervision or just, you know, talk to someone for 10 minutes between sessions or bump into someone in the, in the kitchenette. Like those little things are, are big things when you don't have them. Um, so yeah. like, then, like yeah. really about support networks, both for the client and as well as for the practitioners. Exactly. Exactly. That just, it can be very isolating to be a private practitioner. Um, and, and like I said, when you're in, um, times of major transition, sometimes that's nice. Like you just go in, you do your work, you go home and you can balance lots of things. Um, but over time, I don't think that any, any human is wired to work or live or do life in isolation. Um, and so then, yeah, so then these conversations mm -hmm. went from, um, whoa, wouldn't it be cool to like, wait, could we? To like, mm -hmm. oh, there's a few of us who have rents coming up due in the next few months. Um, and then, and then that's where, you know, we really brought Molly into the conversation because we were talking about 
wellness as a whole, you know, in Molly, and I'll let Molly share this part, you know, she had lots of thoughts about um, supporting all members of a family, not just the member of the family who's there receiving services. And, and that's, and at that point, I was like, okay, sister, now this is, this is where we do it. Like this is <laughs> what was brewing in our hearts and in our souls the, this whole time. So yeah, that's kind of the backstory. And so as, and, and you um, moved to the space at 2800 Forum yes. um, in Victoria Park, I have a personal love for, <laughs> of right? Course. <laughs> of course, I've always thought that was cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so this was in the beginning of 2018. Yeah. And you opened up on the upper floor. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, Molly, do you want to talk to us a little bit about bringing in that? I mean, I remember the first time I walked into that waiting room and I mean, it feels welcoming to families. Yeah. So absolutely. Um, so like Kate was saying, she has all the clinical background and from the collaboration and from um, the professional side of it. And enter me, who I, um, I have four children and my oldest has developmental disabilities. And so from the time that he was one years old through currently, um, but especially when he was younger, before we had school, um, also before that, uh, we were in therapy offices all the time. Um, my son required occupational therapy, speech therapy, physical therapy. Um, wow. and so my three girls, we always joke that they grew up in therapy. We grew up in waiting rooms. And so I made a very conscious effort as a parent early on because we spent so much time is that would be time that I would really dig in so um, because of our schedule um, my twins they weren't able to go to preschool so I would take my Mary Poppins bag to the waiting room and I would unfold our preschool curriculum every day and so everywhere we went um, and I just found that we, we were in and out of lots of waiting rooms and some were really friendly and some it was really hard to sit in there for two hours with toddlers. Mm -hmm. So as Kate started to put this together, um, I looked at it from the family view of being super family friendly and providing opportunities for connection for mm -hmm. the child and the parent or grandparent or whoever had brought um, in the waiting room mm -hmm. to be able to have some really meaningful things to be able to do. So to have a comfortable place to sit, a table to work at, um, plugs available for any charging that needed to happen, coloring pages, games, books, um, mm -hmm. really anything, you name it. It was important to me from the family side of how much time I've spent in waiting rooms to have that be comfortable and inviting and relaxing because really quite honestly sometimes it's really stressful to be in a waiting room with small children um so to make that inviting and then also my vision that as kindred has grown i feel like this is same thing fast forward to if i had been in a position um where all my children were older so i didn't have small kids in a waiting room um, lots of people ask me all the time, how do you fit in self-care and in those very young, when my kids were very young, my answer was, I don't, because we're just waiting room mm. hopping. Um, and so kind of looking at Kindred as a one-stop shop. So the potential that many members of the family could be supported at one location, mm -hmm. one room, one time whatever the support may be for one sibling having maybe an art therapy, maybe mm -hmm. um, dad having yoga therapy. Well, and that's, that's a really, like. Molly, that's a great segue to then what happened in May of 2019. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I was hoping that that would yeah. help. You yeah. Know, that's, that's a perfect segue. Right. So enter in, as we started to talk about that, um, you know, how do we make this available to more people and using Kate's um, genius approach of multidisciplinary and, you know, using a team of people to really help someone um, wholly heal. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that, maybe like, you know, like from every, all aspects. Um, and so yeah. we started dreaming about phase two. Phase two would be adding in some other disciplines um, to support healing another way. So at that point, mm -hmm. we just kind of started to talk about it. Um, mm -hmm. And it moved really fast. It went from let's talk about what would it be like to mm -hmm. add more therapeutic rooms um, mm -hmm. with people that specialized with adults. You know, mm -hmm. what would it be like to have a movement space? Mm -hmm. What would it be like to bring on a massage therapist? Um, and it went from talks of that to here's the space here mm -hmm. we go and luckily um, so i mean the space, space right below right like, below. You, like you started upstairs and then there was this space right below you that had been open that whole year well that, and it, it, this space kate correct me if i'm wrong because um you but i believe that we looked at the downstairs space first or along mm -hmm. with the upstairs space like we had we had looked at that space prior um, and we circled back to it and it was available and um, all the visioning went from there and it was really fun to add phase two because it expanded um, and grew our team in such a magnificent way to add in movement specialist and is, add in body I'll, just, work. I'll just put my little two cents in that's where i stepped in which was yes. so exciting yeah. because, because i had been dreaming at that point of some of, of a space in a community where i could be doing my professional counseling but also do my somatic movements therapy but i didn't i had no idea how i was going to blend those two and I think that the day that I visited with you, Kate, you had just signed on the lease like the day before. I mean, it was just all wonderful, divine intervention, right? Divine it was, intervention. It, yeah. it, it was yeah. the spirit it, just kind of took over and yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and so yes. Victoria, you were one of the first mm -hmm. in the downstairs space. I mean, you really helped to create right. Right. and get that Right. And for, long, and for longtime listeners of Women's Issues, Women's Voices, the other established um, practitioner is Corey Flaker, um, a licensed massage therapist. And she was the another of the, the other practitioner that really um, held that space starting back last year. Yeah. Oh, OK, I feel I'm, I'm feeling a little. Uh, I miss it. <laughs> So that's where we should, that's where we should move to <laughs> oh, March, yeah. March of this year. Megan, you came in, new practitioner, right? And mm -hmm. I mean, ecotherapists were right on the trail, right? You've got mm -hmm. access to take folks. And March 1st was your first day there. And two weeks later, we all started to shelter in place. And so most went inside, we, we all went not inside kindred, but inside of our own homes. Yeah. So what is that? I mean, what has that been like for you to experience kindred through the community of kindred without really the physical space of kindred? It's funny because I, I was thinking about I was thinking about that and and it was really like right before, I think it was right after the pandemic was declared a pandemic, but right as everybody was beginning to wrap their brains about what that meant, we had that first um, NMT training, this training for trauma with the whole group. And that was, I think, March 13th. Because right. um, I was supposed to leave the next day to go to New Orleans, which I did not do. Um, but, uh, but I remember the date. And I, and I feel like that was actually a very good establishment for what it was like to be in Kindred. Like, I remember coming in and meeting a bunch of people that I didn't really know. And I remember you sat next to me, mm -hmm. Victoria, um, and you were like, what did you say? You were like, welcome to sanity. <laughs> and, and I also just want to do a little for, for people listening that that room, the, the training that we all are doing together is part of the kind of things that, that Kate, I'm assuming you were the main spearhead of that. 
um, yeah. a grant in which we're all having the opportunity to get trained in the neurosequential model of therapy, which is looking at brain development and how trauma and adverse life effects life experiences can affect brain development and how that can be a big part whether you're a child or an adult and that that's the training that we were doing together that day so that yeah so i think that also says something about the community there's a lot of opportunities like coming in mm -hmm. as a practitioner um and i only work with adults and sometimes older teens so i was worried about being a little of a fish out of water without working with kids but it's been it's really been great like there's even even in the grand kerfuffle of pandemic i think everyone was kind of like ah for the first week you know what do we do <laughs> how does this work but i am um, I, I have a billing company that I work with and I actually got more information and I got a lot from them, but a lot of really good structure. Like Kate, my telehealth informed consent is based off the one you send to everybody as Aww. an example. Mm -hmm. It's like there okay. was such fast support and there was such fast communication in the whole collective of who's doing what and what do we think we need to do and how's everybody doing. Um, and so it's been, it's been a really, you know, it's, it's nice getting to hear the backstory um, and the, the intentions and, and the mission and, and to have the pieces of that that I know, but also have my own experience of like, hey guys, it's really working. Um, this is a great place. It's a great place to work. It's a great place whenever we can finally go back to it, um, to walk into. I did get to see a few clients before the pandemic happened there and they, everyone commented on the feeling, um, how different it was from where we came from, <laughs> but just the brightness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The openness, there's um, the energy of the place is really good. Um, and I think that just carries over in the container that it, it's, I, I, mm -hmm. I am a recluse, right? I'm one of those people that for the first two months at least was like, this is fine. Um, I mean, it's not fine in the world, but fine for me to be at home. Um, yeah. But I, but once I was beyond that, it, it's also been nice to to know that I have other people that will check in with me and that I check in with and that we're still figuring out how to be a community that's offering good services and doing a lot of learning mm -hmm. together. And it's so cool to have other people pointed towards growth and learning, wanting to have that conversation actively on a regular basis mm -hmm. um, because it just, it reinforces um, my own learning and it reinforces my own inspiration. So my LLC mm. is called Inspired Nature. Mm -hmm. And part of that is because I work from a nature base and part of that is because I think a lot about the meaning of words. Um, and I know that inspiration is it's to breathe into, um, that that root spire, it means breath, it means mind, it means many things, but there's this breathing into um, our own natures and also for me and my work into the natural world um but i feel like there's a lot of inspiration and kindred uh collective and, and all the people who are there so it's a it's a very inspiring place to be yeah. so yeah even so, without a physical space yeah, that's, <laughs> and that's it so we have just a couple of minutes wrapping up this first segment and for those of you who might have tuned in um while in the midst of that I, this is Victoria from Women's Issues, Women's Voices, and um, I'm talking to two, just a few of the women of Kindred Collective, which you can find on the web at kindredcollectivecomo.com. Go check us out. Um, and we've spent this first half hour just talking a little bit about the history and the philosophy of Kindred. And then um, we're going to come back in the second half. Um, and we're gonna talk to each of the folks on this call, on this video call, um, <laughs> about specifically their, their piece of what they do at Kindred, just to give a little bit of a taste. And my hope is to do um, one of these every few months um, and to get different, different um, voices of the women of Kindred, because there are how many practitioners at Kindred, that are connected to Kindred? So the number fluctuates because we have um, interns and practicum right. students and such, but we're, we have been steady right around 25 okay. the last, the last okay. few months. And, and what I think is really cool about Kindred is that, not, um, that some people have their own practices, mm -hmm. I mean, some of those practitioners, but they still stay connected through in-service and through the trainings and um, through leadership meetings. Uh, that, yeah. So, so there's, and, and most of those 25 are female. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, yes. we, have, we have a few wonderful men. And, we have but, four but, exceptions to that. Four exceptions. Four exceptions. <laughs> so we are going to close out this first half um, and go into a little bit, one of our theme songs, and then we will be back in just a few minutes. 